a shark trace, and this trace is for a thresher shark. So first things first, business end. That is a mustard, ten eight seventy four. That's a nine o. See the big barb on it there, and then see that that ring, that eye there. It's, it's welded shut, so it's not going anywhere for me on big fish. That's quite an important thing. So first things first, crush this barb down. Uh, two reasons. One, it makes it easy to get the hook out of the fish, but also it helps it easier to get the hook into the fish. Just give those a bit of a like that. See that's crushed down now. So there's no that's just gonna slide both ways, you know. Obviously that very very sharp. So there's your hook. Uh, what we need next is some cable for threshes, you want an all steel cable trace. I like American fishing wire. Use them if you want, don't use them, but that's my favourite. 480 pound test, and that's 7 on 7, so that's 49 strand cable. Okay, so we want 5 feet or less for the biting trace. Now you can't see this, but behind the camera, this place is marked feet increments. So I'm going to measure out 5 feet of that. 2, 4, 5. Cut that there. So, the, and then what we want, this is some heat shrink tubing, so we can pop that over there, I'll explain that in a second. Then we want some crimps, now these are 1.9mm double crimps, so yeah, slide one over there. Now, what if you're fishing for blue sharks, things like that, taupe if you're using wire, uh, one crimp's enough, big fish. Fish 300 pound plus. I always feel more comfortable if we've got two crimps on there, so I'm going to double crimp that. There's over there. Okay, so that's what we've got. Shrink tubing, crimp, a crimp, a bit of wire. So I'm going to thread that wire through the eye of the hook there, and then I'm going to do what we call a Flemish eye. So that's going to go through there once. You see that? Through there again. I'm just take the tag end, pop it through the eye of the hook, swing the whole thing back on itself like that. Now, I'm just you can just squeeze that between your fingers and it just rolls up the, just roll up okay so all that Flemish eye does is you've got obviously this is a point where you've got wear you've got friction on that so you want for me you, I, I like it I like it about belt and braces all the time you want to, you've got double point, a double surface there for wear so you know you've not just got a single bit of wire wearing against a single hook same with mono as well uh, if you're into the big stuff you know if you're some big fish so Go ahead and we'll take we'll make sure that wire is all sat down because if you've got one little strand like that, it'll run back up the wire and it won't go through the crimp. Yeah. Give that a good twist, right? Pop that into there. Okay, and now what we can do is put that crimp up tight, tight to it and it just goes on in the wire. Like that saves you threading two crimps on as well. Up to there. So, if I'm shy, you two crimps. So, I'm going to take the crimping pliers. These ones have seen better days I'm on the boat too many times. I'm going to come in just from the edge of the crimp there, you see. I'm going to crimp down on that hard. I'm going to go again a little bit further up. So what that does when you're crimping, and you look at that crimp now, now it's crimped. It's flared the edges out, so you've not crimped on the edges and dug the edges into it, particularly important with mono. Um, so And then I'm going to leave a small gap, and I'm going to go again with a second crimp. So that's in there, and in there again. Okay. So double crimped, and you got a bit of a tag in there. So we're going to come down. I'm going to clip that off. But what happens when you're leading up a fish? You wrapping the wire around your hands or pulling in. However you're going to do it, these little this will end up doing that on you, and you'll end up shoving those up your fingers, and it really hurts. So to get around that, that's the reason for this piece of heat shrink, so pop that down there, slide it over the top of there, just onto that first crimp there, like that. Okay, so heat shrink tubing, you can heat it up and it shrinks, it does what it says on the tin. Um, you can use steam, which is a very safe way of doing it, or you can use a blowtorch, it's a bit quicker, but you've got to be careful you don't want to set it on fire, so that's what we're going to do here. Just so you guys don't have to sit and watch me steaming heat shrink tubing for ages and ages. You see that snugging down now already, but just enough to stop 
caption on them. Okay. So then, that's the end of that. That's all done, so you've got your hook. And that's, when you're fishing, you don't want it sitting like that. You want it hanging like that. And it'll, it's hanging nice and free, plenty of movement, so your bait's got natural movement in the water. Okay. So we'll come to the other end, and we're going to do exactly the same again. So we'll take a section of heat shrimp tubing, cut it off. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to put a crimp. And I'm going to put another crimp on there. Now then, this is where these thresher traces differ a bit. So what we're going to use here, that's a 320 pound ball bearing swivel. Um, so I'm going to go through there. What I normally do, a normal shark trace, is I use a thing called a cross lock, which is one of those. I put one of those on there, and what that does, it enables me once if I bring a fish into the boat, or if I want to, you know, tie a rope off the side of the boat and hold it on there while I unhook it or whatever, I can do that. So that, but that opens up and it locks off like that. So once it's shut, nothing's getting out. But you can open it up and you can take your trace into smaller pieces. So you're not, you haven't got a great big 17 foot length of wire and nylon swinging around. You know, it's, you want things as short as possible. Least chance of you getting caught up in things. So, but this is going to stay all wire because thrushes have got such a long tail that they'll go through even 400 pound mono with that during the course of a fight. So Flemish eye back on again. Snug it down. So, and then crimp. That's right here. Put the crimp on there. See around like that. Then we're going to crush that down as well. Just in from the edge. Flare it up. In from the edge. Flare it up. A small gap. Crimp it down. Another small gap. Crimp it down. Tag end. Same as before. We're going to cut that off. Heat shrink tubing. Just down over there. Some people cover the whole thing up, you can do if you want, but for me the only reason for using this heat shrink tubing is to stop me getting wire splinters. You see that one just poke through there, I don't know if the camera picked it up, but you got to watch yourself while you're doing that. Okay, so and then blowtorch again. Just, just gently turning that around, try and distribute the heat over it evenly. You go. Good job. So that's your bite trace. So you've got five feet of 480 pound wire, swivel, Flemish eye, crimp, crimp, heat shrink tubing, come to the other end, heat shrink tubing, crimp, crimp, Flemish eye, hook. So I like my shark traces to be 17 feet long. So what we're going to do is take another 12 feet of wire and we're going to finish off the trace. So it's two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So twelve and five, seventeen. So I'm going to cut that there. Right. We'll keep going as we have since we're working off this end. So we're going to go another small piece of heat shrink tubing. Put that over there. Crimp. We've got another crimp. So I know loads of people who don't double crimp and they don't seem to have any problems, but just to be sure, when you get that real big one, you don't want it to be slipping. So, round, round again, through the eye. That's your Flemish eye. Okay, and then we're going to go into that crimp. Through that one too. Snug those up. And we're going to go crimp that down. And back off the edge. Crimp that down. Your little gap. Crimp. Crimp. And you cut that. Tag end off. Heat shrink tubing, down over there. This this bit of heat shrink tubing actually does two jobs, you'll see in a second. Just snug that down over there. Gently heat it up without setting fire to it. So 
So that one there is actually going to act as a buffer as well. So because where we're fishing for these things, this is quite a, tight, quite a bit of tide in here. So we're going to get down to the other end of this trace. So what happens if your boat's drifting along, or you're anchored, how are you going to do it, drifting normally? Um, your baits aren't just sitting behind you. They're not just straight down. You've got the effect of the tide, and what that does, it acts on the bait and the wire, and you hold the trace however deep you're fishing. Deep you're fishing, the worse the effect. And it actually kites it up. So as your boat's drifting along, say that float, there's your boat, your baits, you think you're fishing 100 foot down, whatever. You're not, you're actually fishing maybe 60 foot down because your line's coming out at an angle, it's not fishing straight down. So to help counteract that, and there's a fine balance here between you could put 10 pound lead on it and fish it straight down, but as soon as that shark picks up the bait, it's going to feel the resistance, it's going to drop it. So you, you, you find the middle grounds where it keeps your bait relatively down in the water. Um, so I'm going to use this. This is 150 gram lead. So I'm going to thread that onto the line. And so now what that other piece, the shrink tube is going to do, is that's going to act as a buffer and it's going to stop that smacking onto that crimp all the time. Like that look. So that's going to sit down there like that. See, the shark's got five feet of slack to pick up and run with. That's sitting down at the bottom, keeping you relatively up and down on your rod. And then this is the end of here that's coming to your rod. So no heat shrink tubing this time because I've got no intention of wiring up a fish from 17 feet away. Two crimps. Another ball bearing swivel. Round. Round. Through there. Squeeze it, pull it, snug it down. This is this cable's I say it's camouflage as well. They spray it brown or colour it brown. It does wear off after a while, but it might help. A bit less glint. Two crimps onto that. And then crimping tool. Crimp him down again. So just in off the edge. That. Crimp it. Just in back off the edge. Crimp it. Little gap, crimp it, another one, crimp it, and then cut off the tag end, and that's just done. So then that's going away to your rod top, if you can imagine. So I've got, I fish Abbott 30s with 80 pound braid on, so I can fit a lot of braid on there, and then I have 150 yards of 50 pound mono as a top shot, uh, just to give you a bit of the stretch that you want. I'll connect those two together with an FG knot, which I'll maybe show you later if anyone's interested. So down to a cross lock, so I've got 50 pound mono tied onto that. Now, if you look carefully at this ring, you see there, that's where the ring's been welded back up. So all the rest of it's dead smooth and up, it's just got a little bump on it. So what you want to do when you tie that onto your 50 pound mono at your rod end, once it's run, run it through your rings, your rollers, whatever, out of your rod, onto there, and you want to tie it to this, the smooth bit, it's tie it at exactly the opposite. You know, if you got that, set that down at six o'clock inside your swivel, you want to tie your line onto 12 o'clock and tighten it up because that little bit is just a little bit of extra friction, a little bit more abrasion, not what you want. Okay, so then your cross lock's going to go onto, onto there, you're going to clip that up. So that's all attached, that's attached to your rod normally, just for the purposes of showing you. Okay, so then you've got your swivel, Flemish eye, crimp, crimp, 12 feet, 480 pound mono. A 150 gram sinker, heat shrink tubing, stopping you getting your fingers with bits of wire in them, and also stopping that weight bashing down onto your crimps. Two more double crimps, a Flemish eye, another 320 pound swivel, just take a bit of twist out during the fight. You could go straight through, but if you go straight through, you run the risk of if the shark's rolling up and twisting, it's going to unspin your wire. Um, so that, that's hence the reason for the swivel in here. Another Flemish eye, a crimp, a crimp some more heat treat tubing to protect your hands and then five feet of wire takes you down to heat shrink tubing a crimp another 1.9 crimp another Flemish eye and a 10 8 only four mustard uh, on the bottom okay so and then what I like to do at the end of all this is to coil them up like that this just keeps them nice and neat in your rig wallet Pull it up like that. Now then, it might be worth noting that I haven't had a thresher yet. 
and I have been trying. But it's going to be this year, and this principle applies for you know the principles we're talking about here, double crimping, all that kind of thing, apply to all your big fish rigs. Uh, and we've got plenty of big fish, it's just the thrush is the next target. So there you go, that's ready for July time, end of June. Uh, and I hope this video has helped a bit, and good luck.